Good afternoon, everyone. Ecological Armageddon. 75% of all flying insects have died, and we have colony collapse disorder. They want to use robo bees to replace pollinators. Wet weather woes, blight on the crops, late harvest, damages, farmers' weekly rundown, wind damage, low yield, water damage, fungus. Farmers paying more to dry their crops to store. You know they're going to pass that along to you. Looking over at the UK, spring barley down half a ton per hectare. But it's a trend. It was down in 2016 as well. Looking at the potato harvest, rain affected, some quality concerns. Yeah, the potatoes are greening. But when we look at the trend, wheat is down for a second year in a row across the UK. Potatoes as well. And then we need to look at the solutions. Fruit walls, what they used for urban farming in the 1600s, you can see a resurgence in that. And please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 while you're watching the video and click that bell so you can stay subscribed and get the latest updates. Ecological Armageddon. Three quarters of flying insects across the nature reserves in Germany have vanished. But startlingly, they're finding this everywhere on our planet. Flying insects plunging by three quarters, they think it has something to do with the pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides sprayed across our fields and crops. Yet that's too inconvenient to talk about because the multinational corporations involved in this kind of distribution, that is just a no-no subject to talk about. Graph here from The Guardian showing you insect pollinators and flying insects decreasing and then we need to add into this the famous colony collapse disorder. If you haven't heard of this, you've been under a rock for the last 10 years. Neonicotinoids responsible for the collapse. So, of course, they have a replacement. They want to use these things, robo bees. I covered this in a video last year, close up here for you. What they want to do is manufacture these now to be the replacement pollinators for the losses of the natural ecosystem. You're going to have to pay for this, by the way, in a higher priced food. That'll be passed on by the farmers that use these to pollinate their fields and fruit orchards. Now, speaking of that, let's look at the trends of crop losses. We're going to go over to the UK right here. Weather wet woes blight late harvest effort. Heavy rain hampering progress in the harvest. And of course, when the farmers need to pay drying bills so they can store their grain, they're going to pass that right on to you. Look for higher food prices based strictly on this. Then we go look at the Farmer's Weekly, rundown, wind damage, low yield, flood damage, moisture damage, and fungus. That's a nice rundown for our food crops. Cereals damaged by wind. Lodging is the name for this when there's wind damage in the fields. And after it's blown over, it's very, very difficult to harvest this and it dramatically reduces yields. But these heavy wind events across the Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere in the grain regions right this year, that's going to intensify even next year with the grand solar minimum. We should start looking for answers right now to this to mitigate what nature is going to throw at us because we know nature is going to throw this at us. So why don't we get ready for it? So taking a look at the farming statistics, can we find a trend happening in the UK in wheat, barley, and potatoes? Absolutely, yes, we can. 2015 peaked. And 2016 was down for wheat, barley, and potato. As well, this year down for wheat, barley, and potatoes. Production out of the UK here. These are the number of planted hectares. And notice that. Half a ton down off the five-year average for spring barley. This goes on top of the losses and the decreases from last year. Notice weather conditions throughout the 2016 growing season adversely affected crop development. And it's just continuing 2017. It's going to intensify next year. And this is a trend. UK production is down from this point forward. So is Germany. So is France. High potato yields, rain affected harvest. They're still getting some out of the ground. Some farmers are having a great harvest. Others are completely flooded out. But the word of the day across all potato harvest right now is low quality yields, some quality concerns. Skin set and greening is what they're talking about. This is greening. It's about the alkaloids inside the potato when it gets too wet. It leaves a bitter taste and digestive problems. Wow, that is such a good selling point when you want to get rid of your crop internationally. Other diseases that are plaguing the potato crop across the UK and Ireland right now, choose any one of these six, it covers the gamut. 
So when we look at the wheat production and the potato production, down in 2016, down in 2017. So again, I always talk about opportunity and the danger. Here we go. Since they know what the top five yielding winter wheat, barley, and oil seed varieties were, which ones do you think you'd want to invest in or start taking delivery and be a distributor of? Hmm, let me think. Probably those top five are going to be the ones that will survive through and be the highest yielding and the most wet and cool resistant up to this point. Let's use those forward. Skip everything else that hasn't worked. It's decreasing. Let's just go right into these five. And you can start to see the solutions. Fruit walls, they use these back. Urban farming in the 1600s, I believe we're going to have to start morphing, dusting off the history books and looking to see how they did it back then because we are going to need to do it the exact same way again. These fruit walls, this is Paris right here of all places. It set up windbreaks and allowed sun to heat the walls during the day even though it was cool in the winter which provided that extra little impetus of heat drying on the fields at that time as well with the wet conditions and this is how they farmed in the cities fruit walls everything's a cycle we're going through another cycle right now the grand solar minimum so why don't we look back into the 1600s and see how they farmed back then and bring those techniques to today our technology is better and we could probably do it in a different fashion yet use the same base model thanks for watching hope you got something out of the video 2018, the year that is going to rock our agriculture across this planet and wake everybody up. Hope you're ready.